and welcome to FinTech Impact. I'm your host, Jason Ferreira. Today on the show, I have Rohit Agarwal, co-CEO of Sora Finance. Sora Finance is a platform that allows advisors to have meaningful conversations with clients about debt and debt restructuring and helps actually facilitate the replacement of their current debt facilities. And with that, here's an interview with Rohit. Rohit, thanks for taking the time today. Jason, thanks for having me. Excited to be oh. here. Oh, my pleasure having you here a second time. First time we spent the entire time just Shooting the shit. It was awesome. Um, so, so basically, Rohit Agarwal of Sora Finance. Tell us about Sora Finance. Yeah, for sure. In a nutshell, I think Sora Finance, what we empower advisors to do is to manage the liability side of their clients' balance sheets with the same level of rigor that they normally apply to assets. Uh, so how do we do that? We really do three things. And I think we do three things quite well for, for our advisor customers. And, and we predominantly serve RAAs. And I think it's, you know, one, data aggregation. We make it really seamless for advisors to see all their clients' liabilities at a granular level with links that don't break. I'm talking, you know, we pull in balance, monthly payment, term, interest rate, all pulled in on all existing liabilities. Part two, then, is we have we're kind of this ongoing engine in the background. So we alert the advisor whenever there's a meaningful talking point or interaction or action to take with the client. It could be, hey, their HELOC floated up to prime plus two. They could move to a HELOC at prime minus one. We noticed they took out a mortgage in Q3 of last year. They can actually refinance and save this much money in interest savings. And if you invest the Delta, here's what it ends up being. So there's a second layer of a lot of analytics and inputs. Could be, you know, one thing that's popular lately is advisors want an alert when rates drop below a certain amount. We provide that update to advisors. And then I think third is our, our lending ecosystem. So we have about 50 plus lenders on our back end. And that way, we're able to support all consumer loans or commercial for business owner clients, whether our DSBA or working capital lines, but able to kind of guarantee just due to the breadth of lenders, the most competitive rate in the market. Excellent. So we're going to dive into all three of those in a minute. But first, let's start yeah. off with the origin story. How did Sora come to be? Yeah, sure. So my co-founder and I, in 2021, spent a lot of time, we knew we wanted to start a company in FinTech. And we spent a lot of time actually thinking about different macro themes. The one we, we spent some time looking at was Americans spend a lot more than they should on, a, we call it excess interest payments. We looked at the US market and they have about, about $100 billion a year because they either don't get the best deal whenever there's an opportunity, you know, when they're taking out a new loan or they don't refinance when they're in the money or optimize their existing debt. On average, the Americans wait about 11 months to refinance from when they're in the money net of these. So that was kind of a problem statement we really went into. Why do Americans spend so much? That's that's a lot of money that just goes to banks and lenders for no reason. It's for lack of lack of someone watching it, right? Which you're trying to solve for. <clears throat> exactly. Lack of watching, or there's so much friction in getting the best deal available to you. And so that was the problem we looked at a lot in 2021. We actually started the company direct to consumer. So 2020, we launched the company and raised our, our pre-seed round in February of 2022, kind of as this betterment for debt. Going direct to consumer, and I think that's that's helped us in the long run with a UI UX that's that's more consumer grade as a way to get the information we needed from a consumer, alert them when they can save money, and then seamlessly execute. We built that. I think in 2022 we also realized our LTV to CAC wasn't where we wanted it to be. Uh, we thought a lot about how do we get throughput on conversion when we highlight an opportunity to save money, and those two coming together allowed us to kind of think about different channels. And the light bulb went off when I was talking to an RAA and was talking about, you know, one thing I, I think a lot about is how do we add value beyond managing assets, whether it's estates, whether it's insurance, whether it's taxes. And we kind of pulled on that thread and started a pilot with about 10 RAAs in the fall of 2022 and saw the most pull from RAAs. And so we made the decision in January of 2023 to close our consumer offering and focus 100% on serving financial advisors, wealth managers, and RAAs to essentially give them this, I call it easy and powerful to use expert tool in their arsenal to really wow clients. And so since then, we've been focused on RAs. We've got about 400 active RAs in the software right now that are adding clients, requesting loans, reacting to our alerts and analytics and insights. And we're just continuing now to try to move more up market into more enterprise contracts. Excellent. So I will say a couple of things. First off, the entire fact that you started consumer grade and you said that it's like you use an informer design. I'm just going to tell anyone listening, that's where your design should be. I, I really, I look at a lot of what happens in this industry and it's yeah. so over-engineered over and under-developed mm. in terms of how pretty it is. And I mean, it doesn't sound mm. important, but I'll put Steve Jobs. At the end of the, I think it was Steve Jobs who said it. But something the effect, at the end of the day, the UX is the experience. It, it, is, it, yeah. is, the, it is the software. Yeah. And yeah, like if you don't deeply think about how people are going to interact with it and make it as easy and pleasurable as possible, like you're just going to 
sow the seeds of your own of your customer's own frustration. So well done That's there. Cool. And then your pivot, good on you to fully just commit to the channel because too many people yeah. fall into the trap of like multiple channel servicing. And then the problem yeah. there is, is that you're speaking to two different markets. You're never going to align fully on how this works. Yeah. So, so great. So what, what really precipitated So talk to me about the early conversations that led to the pivot with the advisors in yeah. kind of the yeah. primary market. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, like what we kept hearing when we talked to advisors, and we had this group of 10 that we probably spent you know, hundreds of hours with, and, and we kept hearing a couple of things. What gave us more confidence to make the pivot fully into RAs and, and serving wealth managers was one, this kind of downward fee pressure manifesting itself through we need to do more. So we need to do more beyond. Well, I think it's less fee pressure so much as more justification of fee pressure. For sure. For yeah. sure. Justifying the value. Yeah. Great yeah. point. Uh, so this idea that they need to do more. Uh, and then two, we asked kind of why they didn't do liabilities. And a lot was around, one, it's hard to get the right data and keep it up to date. Two, oftentimes we shy away from it because we don't want to make a recommendation if it's not going to be the most competitive rate and it's time consuming. So another thing that I think you know technology can help solve. And then three, how do you make it profitable? It wasn't necessarily directly profitable. So these kind of three things came together. And then I'd say the fourth big one was I was worried initially a lot around how do you make Sora or necessarily liability planning and optimization a must-have versus a nice-to-have within an, for an advisor. And that kind of really drove our design. So these 10 RIAs really helped us design the product in a way that said, if it does this, it will become more of a must-have because it is easy to use. And back to that word of powerful, that it becomes core into my, I'd say, workflow gave us more confidence to make the full pivot. Yeah, and it's the entire how to make this a must. I mean, we're yeah. talking about the other side of the balance sheet, the thing we only ever had like line items and statements yeah. like looking into versus actually being able to provide value on there. I mean, we can provide value by saying you should do this and being there at the yeah. time it comes and happens, but you're providing the ability to actually execute on that, which is something we didn't have before at scale. I thought about it. Like, I was like, if we do one thing well for advisors, it's like proactive alerts and seamless execution. Doing that, I think, and it frees up AUA, it creates a wow moment for the client. And I think it really justifies the differentiation for that advisor right now. Totally. Okay. So you're able to aggregate all the debt. Let's go through the three stages. So aggregate all the debt, yep. which is pretty straightforward. You can pull that stuff from the legs of the plaid and other aggregators and pull that in. So you're getting the mortgage, but I'm guessing like how much mm-hmm. data are you getting around that? How much like how much are you aware of the terms of that mortgage? Or are you kind of like basing on yep. the interest payments, figuring out what the terms are? Exactly. Yeah. So what we do, we actually don't use Platter Yodley. We use our own APIs that we built out. So we spent a lot okay. of time, and this was kind of a front end, where we use, we do need client information. So client PII, uh, first name, last name, date of birth, uh, phone number, and social security number, which we don't store. We're SOC 2 compliant. We have it for about five seconds. But with just that information, what we're able to do is pull in balance with a soft credit pull. So we know all the balances of all of their existing loans. But then our APIs and we do use a third party as well, go directly to the lending institution. So if your client has a mortgage at Wells Fargo, we go to Wells Fargo, and that's how we pull in interest rate and monthly payment and term. Because we really, those are the four pieces we need to know what we're going to optimize. So with that, we have a live link that the advisor can refresh at any point and actually know the monthly payment and the interest rate, which is critical. And I'd say the other thing we do with the data is we do enrich it. So sometimes the monthly payment pulls in escrow, insurance, and taxes, and Sora will pull that out to get a true principal and interest. Um, so with that, that's how we kind of pull in the data piece and the client doesn't have to be involved. I think that's the main thing. So it's not like username and password. I got a link with Platter Yodley. And if the, they change their password, the links break. Just one time with that PII, we pull in everything and have a live link of the granular view of the debt. Excellent. So basically, that's that's the starting point. Let's go on to the analytics. Yep. Talk to me about the analytics yep. that you're basically doing and what you're discovering, what you're pulling out and how, basic, how you're effectively suggest the next best action. Exactly. Yeah. What about next best action? So we pull in the, the liability data, sorry, and then we pull in the credit score. And we also pull in all the stuff around the home. So we know home value, the date they purchased it. You get a lot of stuff around the, around the house. So you have a, a lot of data also on the underlying asset behind the loan, whether it's home or auto. Then we take all that data. So what do we know? We know the advisor also puts in through integrations income, all the liability data, credit score, home value. We take all that data and public available data and try to drive next best action. So 
One, advisors can set some alerts they want themselves. They want to know, I want to know when credit score moves by 10 or 20 points. I want to know when a new loan is taken out on the account. I want to know when their debt to income ratio reduces by 5 or 10% or increases by 5 or 10%. Uh, they can set all those different alerts. We push, I'd say, obviously, we push rate term refinances. So anyone that takes out, a, they, we think they can save money on their interest payments, we let them know. We also have a bunch of different analytics. So one thing is they could run the analytic. If I were to pay extra down principal on my home, how does that impact, you know, the impact of what the house might raise after seven years versus putting in the market for seven years? If I need to purchase something, I have you know, a $50,000 one-time payment. What is the impact of selling assets or actually financing it over the long term? And so helping advisors have those conversations where liabilities are a core part of it is what we're trying to build on the analytics side uh, beyond just making sure we alert advisors uh, when their clients can save money. Excellent. All right. So then the last piece of it, of course, is the lending ecosystem. All right. So you pull in, you basically said, hey, got this facility, line of credit, yep. mortgage, whatever it is. You've done the analysis. You need to do this to improve your situation. Talk to me about how you get the ball across the line. For sure. Yep. So we have, with our, our, our lender partners, we care about the most, getting the most competitive with great service for the client. So for example, if an advisor's client in the U.S. requests a HELOC for $200,000, we know that the, the, you know, the best rate is likely going to be with Third Federal, Connects, this Alliance. We've kind of mapped out who has the best rates, and that's who we partner with and integrate with. So from there, essentially, the information flows over to the lender partner that SORA has identified. The advisor and client are constantly updated along the way about what's tracking the progress. Uh, and Sora tracks the progress as well, and helps tracks the progress as well, and helps push the loan over the finish line. For certain loan loans, the wholesale lender is involved, and a Sora loan officer drives the entire process because we are a licensed mortgage broker. But nice. in general, it is I want loan information moves over to lender, and then Sora and the loan officer and the client continually push ahead and make sure the loan is moving through. Yeah, okay. So that's basically it. Now talk to me about the feedback in terms of the advisors. Like, what are they saying that this is, the effect yeah. this has had on their business? Yeah, for sure. So I think, you know, we've, we've seen advisors, it kind of falls into three buckets. Like, why do advisors continue to use Sora and I'd say pay our monthly subscription? One is the data piece. One, they want an easy way to have a live look into their client's liabilities. And they now have all that data consistently in their platform, whether it's their planning software, their CRM, they have the liability data and the value on the home, all the data SOAR provides. I'd say two is just, we we often tell advisors to try us versus any other platform or, or search themselves. It's us getting the best rate for any lending need. A lot of this has been new loans lately, I'd say, just given, you know, not as much opportunity to refinance when rates uh, continue to increase. We had a little bit of a dip where we executed some some home loan refinances and, and HELOC refis. But I, I'd say it's a lot of getting the best pricing on new loans with number two uh, and the service that comes with it. And then I'd say the, the third main reason where advisors like to use Sora is with prospective clients. So we have a whole tool where you can send out to prospective clients, get their liabilities. We run a bunch of analysis and it goes into their kind of uh, proposal as a way, hey, not only am I managing everything else, but here's what I do for your liabilities. Valuable value proposition. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous that we weren't looking at this kind of the integrated way that you have been for so long, quite honestly. And I continue to live in a country where that's the case. So it is what it is. So yeah, so, all right. Before we wrap up, there's three questions like that. Yeah. On a positive note. First one is, if you had one wish for something you could change in the industry for your company, what would it be? Yeah, I, I would say data flow. And I think it's probably a positive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you get on a funny one because that comes up a lot. Can you? All right, let's listen. You're you're at 300 episodes. You're probably the 120th person to ask for that. Because really? Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I would say data flow. Like one time you input it once, and they kind of all systems talk to each other. That's something we're trying to do also on the lending side. I think in the industry as well, one thing I would like to see more of, and I think I, you're already seeing this when I talk to now my different my friends that are looking yeah. at getting an advisor or not. It's this yeah. combination of the advisor becoming more, you know, more of a life coach as well. Kind yeah. of a quarterback for all advice across, whether it's, you know, family. And it just, I think that's where it's going. I think that's what I look at my, my friends with, we're all in the same bucket of young kids. And I think it's more of a behavioral plus just financial kind of life coach aspect is, a, is something I'd like to see change. People leaning more into that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was funny. It's funny because I just, presented on artificial intelligence set exchange and I have a couple more coming up and that's the conclusion is that look that's that's the direction we're all heading we've been heading that way yep. for a long time and basically this will just facilitate that 
the so yeah. So the second question I have for you is mm-hmm. in, is what's been the biggest challenge in the company to where it is right now? Yeah, it's a great question. I'd say you know biggest challenge getting it to where we are right now is I'd say in 2022 to most of 23 was a technical challenge. Like how do we build out uh, everything we say our product? We you know had this vision of what we want our product to deliver on. And I think it was the time it took to build out our APIs, to pull in the data, to drive analytics. I'd say it was more of a technical challenge. And with that underneath it, having the right players on your team. Yep. So can we hire well and get the right team together to deliver on that technical challenge? Now, I would say it's just the, the long sales cycle is quite tough to keep going. And I think we're saying that with particularly with larger RA firms or integrations with large wealth management platforms. And I think a bit of it is also cutting through the noise on Sora's value prop for two guys that uh, aren't from the wealth tech industry. Yep. And I think it is a little bit of a, you know, who you know network. So us trying to work through cutting through that, say, look at our product and look what we're building. Yeah, no, it's sales cycles can be a challenge for any early stage one as well. The fact that you're able to service uh, individual advisors uh, effectively is, is a positive, but yeah, you want the enterprise contracts and those take time. But that's yep. what it is. The last question I have for you is what excites you the most about what it is you're working on and keeps you getting up in the morning to keep on fighting the good fight? Oh, for sure. Yeah, that one, two things. I think one, I think managing liabilities, I get the most excited that the client or the end user is going to be better off. Like they're going to have, if they're using Sora, they're going to have more money in their pocket. I'd say two, it is just trying to stand, change the standard of care in the industry. So I get excited about thinking about like, hey, you know what? Five or 10 years ago, advisors did nothing on taxes or say something beyond investing money. And now it's saying, how do we make it in five years? Every advisor is doing liability planning and optimization. I say Sora was critical, helping change the standard of care in the industry. And that gets me super excited. Also, Selfishly, I know if that happens, so our benefits. But I think the, the both get me super excited. And then, actually, you know what? Last thing is, I think we have a wonderful team. We got twelve people that are just fantastic, and we had a great culture. And I enjoy, really enjoy, the idea of building something from a PowerPoint. to now that's out there in the hands of advisors. Excellent. Well, I mean, you're right. We wind the clock back six, seven years ago. There were no tax planning softwares dedicated like the likes of Ballista Plan or FP Alpha or estate planning soft- softwares, which FP Alpha falls into. And now there's like another six yep. estate. Offers. Yeah, you know, there's an yeah. opportunity. You know, it's funny. Everybody was so focused, I think, for a long time on the financial planning software side of it that they missed the opportunity for everything outside the financial plan that rounded it out. And yeah. you know, at least in the U.S., you guys are really leaning hard into creating value propositions around every aspect of personal finance, which is going yeah. to not only increase the value, but just basically just again at the end of the day, yeah. service more clients better, which is again the end goal. Definitely. Yeah, well done. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Excellent. So, Rohit, thank you so much for taking the time today. Yeah, thanks, Jason. It was fun. So that was my interview with Rohit Agawal of Sora Finance. If uh, you are a financial advisor in the U.S. and, uh, frankly, you're not looking at helping clients with their debt, I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, Seriously, check them out. Not just the endorsement, but it's the belief as well that this is something we cannot ignore. And with that, as always, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, or your podcast. Until next time, take care. This podcast was brought to you by Woodgate Financial, an award-winning financial planning firm catering to high net worth individuals and their families. To learn more, go to woodgate.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play, or find more episodes at jasonperera.ca.